Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, November 25th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The island's latest murder has left the St. Philip community in shock. Late last night, 29-year-old Denzel Obed Scabro was gunned down after he was involved in an altercation with a man at a house in Eastbourne, St. Philip, in an area known as Vietnam. When Bobby Today visited the area, residents recalled hearing numerous shots being fired. However, most said they did not know the victim very well, but suggested it would be difficult on his family. Barbados's mission to recruit nurses from Ghana will soon bear fruit. Executive Chairman of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Juliet Baino Sutherland, who recently returned from a trip to the West African country, told reporters today the recruitment exercise was successful. Speaking on the sidelines of the hospital's annual church service today, she revealed that about 115 nurses were interviewed and final decisions are still to be made. She noted that the nurses are highly skilled, but rubbished suggestions that they would be paid more than their local counterparts. Ghana has a, a wealth of, 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 of nurses. In fact, they have specialist registers that we don't have here. So you're able to recruit nurses that have uh, beyond post basic qualifications that are actually certified um, in areas like um, uh, ophthalmology, critical care. So they have uh, post basic programs. So we're going to get the opportunity to bring nurses with specialist skills that, that we have. And what is wonderful because it is a government to government program, they're coming to work with us. They're going to be having the same uh, salaries and conditions of work as, as Barbadian nurses. And because I understand that's been, uh, people have said that they're going to be paid different and better. That is not the case. That would be an industrial relations nightmare, as you could imagine. So that is not the case. They're being paid. There's a scale of, of for nursing. And um, you go based on your years of qualification. If you come from the geriatric hospital or wherever, here you have a certain amount of years. It's a scale that's carefully worked out. So it will be a similar thing. There is no um, um, different or additional pay. She, however, noted that the nurses would receive a gratuity, which in no way disadvantages Barbadian nurses. She also stressed there's more than enough room for local nurses to fill. The nurses that are coming from Ghana will be getting a gratuity, which all contract workers at the hospital get, which is a gratuity instead of a pension. So if you're Barbadian nurses, like we're keeping our fingers crossed, we haven't heard formally yet that we will have a, 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 the, our nurses out of the Barbados Community College passing the regional exam, we have positions on our establishment. By that, we mean positions that are pensionable. So those, so we have kept and 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 um, ring fence uh, positions in the hospital for Barbadian nurses. But as you've heard from the nursing fraternity, we need hundreds of nurses. So we don't have enough of a throughput of local nurses and so we're going to have to continue to supplement until we're able to get our basic and post basic programming up to provide the numbers that are required. Students of the Eden Lodge Primary School had to be temporarily relocated this morning after offensive graffiti was discovered on several walls of the school. The Royal Barbados Police Force was called in and the school given a security sweep while students were housed at a nearby church. After conducting investigations, the lawmen gave the all clear for students to re-enter the school around 10.43 a.m. Education officials had covered the graffiti. The ministry plans to have the walls repainted this weekend. The Barbados Population and Housing Census scheduled for May 2020 might be postponed by at least a year. Word of this has come from Director of the Barbados Statistical Service, Aubrey Brown, who told reporters that the department was currently battling a shortage of financial and human resources. We are making a recommendation to our government that it be postponed by a year to May 2021. So we would have to await the, the decision of our, minister, of our Prime Minister as to whether we would postpone it to May 2021. 
we, as I said before, we still have a challenge with the resources. So right now we are not adequately prepared to conduct it in, in May 2020, 2020, in May next year, May 2020. In sports, Cricket West Indies today announced the 15-man squad for the ICC Under-19 Cricket World Cup that takes place in South Africa in January 2020. Under the guidance of Captain Kimani Mel Melius, the young squad will first face the England Under-19s and Sri Lanka Under-19s in the West Indies Rising Star Under-19 Tri-Series to be held in Antigua in December. The lineup includes Barbadians Matthew Ford, Raymond Simmons, Antonio Morris, and Naeem Young. The skipper says he's looking forward to the challenge. Leading the team, I will go about that job with a high level of integrity and respect. And what you could look from me, being that I played the first World Cup in 2018, I would like to share my experience and try to get, lead the way in the batting and try to get as much runs as possible and also win matches for the team. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. To regional news now, as the ruling Jamaica Labour Party faced a number of corruption scandals, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has issued a stern warning to the opposition. He was speaking at the JLP's annual conference yesterday, where he pledged that more resources would be given to anti-corruption agencies. What is important is that the government supports the development of the institution so it can accelerate very quickly on that learning curve and provide the resources so that they can move very quickly on the learning curve and that the government does not intervene or interfere and that message goes to the opposition as well leave the anti-corruption and policing agencies to do their job and with a general election on the horizon, the Prime Minister has placed the electorate on alert. The Labour Party is ready to take on a second term to work in your service. So, mm, do so, mm, do so, mm, do so. On the international scene, Hong Kong's leader announced today that she would listen to public opinion after a landslide election victory by opponents of Chinese rule amid months of sometimes violent pro-democracy unrest. We get more in this Reuters TV report. Candidates running against the establishment won nearly 90% of 452 district council seats, according to local media. That's compared to around 22% last time around. Elections follow six months of chaotic anti-government protests. But on voting day Sunday, a lull in the violence and cheers for the winners. Democratic candidate Kelvin Lam won his race. I think the Hong Kong people have clearly spoken in a way um, that uh, this is not only a referendum, but it's a, it sends a very strong signal to the government that they are not happy with how they deal with the protests so far. And I think that the Hong Kong people should really, really leverage on this uh, result uh, to ask for more democracy in the future. The voting turnout was around 71 percent, almost double the number from last time, and a record for Hong Kong. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernilla Wedderburn. Good evening. <laughs>